Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and a build finale of AMT's 1934 Ford pickup. It's a three-in-one kit and we made the tow truck. This is going to be for our Texaco station. So let's jump into it because we got a lot to cover here. TJ and Wayne and Zach, gotta go. Lee and Duke, you're out. Tim, I know you look cool. And you're happy. Lori and <laughs> TJ, got to go. And uh, Jake, we're going to put you over here for a while. Well, I had to put this on hold the other day because I was waiting for these. Uh, I got a thousand stir sticks and we'll use this one as the pointer today. Um, I built a battery box out of these stir sticks and just wanted to make a simple box in the back to cover up all the electric stuff because the lights are lit front and back. I didn't put a dome light in here or the amber light because my snicker bar fingers would not fit all the way up inside this thing to get the wires to run. There was no way I was going to be able to do it. I tried and failed miserably. So I'm glad I didn't drill the hole first in the top because it would have just been a wire running straight down through the uh, the cab. Uh, it took me about an hour to decide it wasn't worth it. So let's talk about this battery box, okay? Before we do that, um, remember at the end of all my finales, I do a picture music video type thing showing the build through. If you want, stick around for it. I always have fun doing it. I hope you have fun watching. Um, but let's get back to this battery box. This is just basically to hide the new battery holder I got. Check this out. CR2032. It's got solder points on both sides and a convenient on-off switch. These are found on Amazon and... I think I got five or six of them for six bucks, so about a buck a pop. But I needed a place to hide it because I don't have a trunk. And I thought, well, we can build a box on the back of this thing. I mean, Jake loves to climb up on stuff, so he can go right there even in when we store it. But all I did was I took these stir sticks, I cut them off with my... I'll pull it out here if I put it away cut it off with my miter box and saw and what I did to get them all even is I put a, a stop in here where the uh here we go the stick wouldn't let it go any farther this way so I just kept pushing the piece up cutting it off pushing another one up cutting it off and they were all exactly the same length easy peasy and this I've had since uh, I don't know I was right out of high school I guess same with the saw, same blade, still sharp as nails. So it worked great. But I glued my tools on here um, just to give it a little bit of life to it so it's not just a big flat. And I took my silver tape and I made a couple of uh, hinges, which are kind of stupid for the hinges to be on the front with the handle. <laughs> so we're going to call those straps for now to hold the front to the, to the top. And I put a handle on there just for looks because, I mean, he's going to have to lift this thing up to get into the tools. But I'm using the battery. Now, I did put a magnet on here, right here, to help lift this up. And it just was kind of a pain. So I glued the battery down to it, and I glued all the tools. So when that goes in, the bars and everything look like they're laying on top of this rail. But they're actually glued on the flats here and then this one's glued up on top here so it doesn't roll around um i didn't paint them or anything i just or didn't leather them or anything i just left them the uh the silver because i know if i put that weathering on there it would have just ran around and just looked streaky the uh wrenches got the silver along with the uh the pliers and the screwdriver and i did panel line those the battery, I talked about that before, but I glued it down, and now that is my handle to lift this off. And this is what the underside of that looks like. It's just two 
uh, gussets to hold everything together. These pieces just to hold the uh, boards together. I didn't weather the underside because there's no reason to, and there's that magnet I was talking about to help lift it. I had different plans for it, so that didn't work out. But that looks pretty cool. The front with the straps, the handle, those are just made out of that uh, foil tape that I got from the dollar store. I did weather this using pastels, or not pastels, um, regular store-bought craft paint that I thinned in water really well and put on very lightly. And I think it looks really good. I'm happy as heck with that. Now let's talk about this new uh, battery box and switch. This is awesome. I love it. I'm going to probably order more when, you know, as they wear out, I'm going to order more because these things will fit in a trunk really nice. They're very flat. I mean, they don't take up a whole lot of room at all. And it's so nice to just be able to so have a solder spot on them. This piece of tape is just to hold these wires down. Um, I had to leave some extra wire in there. So when I pull this thing out to change the battery, because the battery won't come all the way out, it'll hit here. So, and then I drilled the two holes here. I drilled the two holes underneath, ran these up and under, ran these down in and along the fent the frame just like I talked. I'll flip this over in a second. But this worked out great. I did some research. You can run uh, nine of these LEDs on this battery. I've run five of them. No, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them in my uh, one car for four days straight before the battery started to get dim. Um, so they last a while. With just the four lights, they'll last you a while. But there's the box. I'm really happy. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the lights. This whole kit was really great. Now, I've had some people talk bad about AMT kits. I've had a couple of doozies that are really bad, but I've had some really fantastic kits. And this one is a really fantastic kit. I've had a blast with it, and I've had really hardly any problems that weren't because my hands or my skill level. Because <laughs> let's face it, we all think about stuff that we want to do, and our brain works, our eyes work, our hands say no, or vice versa. But let's keep going here. Um, We'll talk about our winch assembly. Uh, they went in, this went together very well. Uh, remember I was talking about wanting to build a box or something like that for this and making it to where it looked like it was an electric hookup to where you could push a button up and down. That would have been cool, but I want to be able to control this chain. And with this setup, I can. I can... You know, I can turn this and, and lower the chain to where I can pull this off and I can hook it up to another car and actually hold the car. This is all super glued down very well, but I didn't want to just make it to where it was stationary, just hooked up because I want to do some stuff with the Texaco station. Um, and I think that's the best way to do it. So that's where we are there. Um, let me flip this over on its side because I want to show you a little more with this winch or winch assembly. If you look, I have a little hoop on here. And what I'll do, I'll show you a picture of it. What I did is I just bent a piece of round sprue, this right here. I have these that I bought many, many years ago, and they're different stacks for bending uh, PE for when I was doing Zach ship model. So I just took this on the medium one, I heated it up, wrapped it around it, just held it in place for a second until it cooled off, cut it off flush, and glued it on the back with super glue. And that gives me a hoop on the back 
that I can hook the, the uh, chain up to. And that just keeps the chain from smacking across the back. And while I got it up here, I did weather the snot out of this back. Um, here's a good picture showing that. And that went out, worked out really well. I used my um, Tammy's weathering kits to do that. And just playing around with it. A uh, little bit of panel liner and things like that. The chain was brass. I took that and I stuck it in a, between a couple of alligator clips and painted it with um, flat metallic gray. And I think it looks really good. It didn't look good brass and shiny and everything. So I painted it with metallic gray and then I took the Tamiya's uh, weathering kit and just kind of dabbed it here and there with the rust. That really didn't show up that great, but um, the, the flat paint sure made it look better. Uh, let's see here. The wires and the battery holder. Let me show you underneath here while we're talking. Whoops, the hood. <laughs> I didn't attach. The wires I ran down, like I said, and over and underneath, and they come all the way back to about here and go straight in on both sides. Those wires are hardly visible underneath here at all. And if you looked at them, you'd just think they were part of the build. Now, on our Grandpa Mark's Hobbies uh, group page, I put how these brakes worked on there. Um, I found a diagram of it, and I was like, yeah, I got to run brake lines. Well, these are mechanical brakes. And the more I looked at that, and the more I thought about this going to be on its wheels all the time, I opted out of spending the time on it to do those in the frustration. Uh, it would have been a lot of stretch sprue and things like that that I'm just really not set up to do right now in the shop. So I opted out of making the mechanical brakes, but it's really cool. If you have a chance, jump over there and check that page out. Um, it's cool how those brakes work. And think about pulling another car with this thing with mechanical brakes, uh, that'd take some guts. <laughs> um, one thing with this is you see, I got the, the radiator cap on it, but I don't have the uh, Ford logo in the front. That was short, uh, short shot. So it, it was only an F and an O on the Chrome and the rest of it was missing. So I just left it off. There is a decal. I didn't want to just slap a decal on there. It needed to be the 3D or nothing at all. And I figured, you know, these guys are working on this all the time. It probably got painted 16 times since it's been in their shop. And it was one of those things that they just said to heck with it or somebody offered them money for it and they sold it. <laughs> the headlights look great. Um, the Ooga horn, I'm glad I painted that little uh, silver strap around it. It looks like that's actually where it's mounted. So that came out cool. The engine came out great. I really liked doing this flathead. AMT spent some time molding this. The carburetor was molded well. The, the flathead was molded well. I made the uh, wire loom for the, the spark plug wires. I ran a wire back from the coil into the back of it. I've seen that done quite a bit in pictures. The fuel lines run, the choke lines run, the throttle line is run. So everything's there now that that needed to be there. Um, really nice detail on the firewall. And you'll see pictures of that in the montage at the end. So all in all, this came out great. I took a bunch of pictures of it, just, you know, like I do. And remember when I was talking about, well, you know, when it's the work truck, I'll have the hood on and everything. And when it's, you know, on a Fridays when we're having the car shows and things like that, I'll just take the hood off. Well, I'll tell you what, to be honest with you, I really like the Roadster look where you can see the engine up front and especially the engine on this flathead because it's really done well. But I don't like that look. For this, 
it just it looks better with the hood in place. So could I have done the hinges or should I have in the uh, when I started this? I could have. I didn't have anything to do them with or, or I might have. I didn't have the parts to be honest with you. It would have been cool to be able to pull this open. But again, if I, I would have done all that work to, to make these things opening, and with my hands, I'd have just busted stuff up doing it. So for me, it's, easy, it's better to just take the whole thing off and out of the way to show off the engine. But for display, I'll be keeping this in place. It just, to me, it looks better. Um, it is a truck. It's a work truck. Um, yeah, they're showing it and everything because it is the Texaco truck and it's their shop. But they're going to keep that on. Now, lastly, before the music, the gas can. I liked how I had that single stripe around it. But I thought, you know what? That thing would bounce right out of that stripe. So I added one coming around the top and a buckle going into the uh, to the strap going this way. So now it's not going anywhere. It looks right. Um, very happy with that now. Weathering, I did quite a bit of it. Uh, subtle weathering, like right here where the paint would be banged up from him just leaning over the top and working. The edges, the corners, the uh, tailgate in and out. The toe assembly itself got weathered pretty good. The chain, um, the handle came out great. See, I put the two stripes on there. To finish that off and I, I like that um, from here forward I didn't do a whole lot of weathering except for the running boards and where his arm would have leaned on the uh, um, the door the door panel the other thing I didn't do is I didn't add a rear view mirror to it they had them in the kit they just didn't look great I had it all prepped and everything. I actually had the Mod Podge out and the thing opened. And the more I looked on it, the more I just couldn't put it on. It, it just didn't look good. So I left it off. The bumper I put on, um, I had to sand this smooth on the top here where it rolls over because there was a pretty bad mold line there. And then Molotov penned it. Um, <laughs> On the, ho the hoist light on this side, you can see a little bit of a, a goober right here. The reason why that is is because plastic melts really quick when you get it too close to your soldering iron. <laughs> so I kind of left it goobered up. I just hit it again with the, the uh, Molotov pen to chrome it back up. <laughs> it happens. So there we go with the... Uh, 1934 Texaco truck. I am really super happy. Thank you again for sending this my way. Uh, again, thank you for the Texaco uh, door logos and everything. It, it makes this just perfect. I took a picture of it in front of the Texaco station that's not finished yet. And uh, it really looked cool. Lights came out great. The light box came out great. The hoist came out great. And it wasn't from my talent. Believe me, this thing is built well. It's easy to go. It went together fast. Um, I mean, five updates. And really, it could have been four and a finish. But I wanted to show you just before I got the lights. But on that note, how about we hit some music? Thanks, everybody, for following along and watching. Uh, thanks for the thumbs up and all the comments. Thanks for everything. I really appreciate it, and it's just everything's going so well here. But let's hit some music. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and better tomorrow.